This video is a basic Python tutorial that will cover one example of code related to extracting and using data from a Python based program called Gaussian to analyze the zero point vibrational energy of rhodium 3 for computer computational chemistry research. This example is specific to this one program in this file. Um, but here we go. To start off, we have line 1 here that imports the operating system package um, as it says in my little note here to the right of the line. Um, I explain the reason for this in another video called Python Odds and Ends. The first real line of code uh, is this one here at line 5 that says with open C colon blah 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 R as F. When trying to open a file it is helpful to have the correct file address. Uh, Python only follows explicit instructions and it cannot infer what you want it to do. So to find out the specific address of your file, you need to go to where the file is at in your computer, um, in this case Python scripts folder for this file here. Right click on the file you want to look at and select properties and it should have this entire address written there. Uh, we have this R here at the end, um, which tells Python that this is a raw string. Um, this differentiates this address type from other possible address types and address formats so that Python knows what to read. Then at the end here we have as f, which is telling Python when it opens the file to name it as f. Now we want Python to uh, manipulate f, this file f, so we say with the whole line using the open function, using the open function, open this file name, um, which is found at this address, and then call it f. Now manipulate f for uh, for line in f, so that's for every line in f. Um, this is what we want you to do. For uh, for line in f, line equals line dot strip, uh, blank slash t slash n slash r. What this does is it tells Python to remove spaces, tabs, uh, new lines, and returns. Um, note that the beginning of the parentheses here does have a space that we put in, so we're telling Python explicitly to remove the space. Uh, spaces are not nothing, they do have mass, you could say, um, so we do have to tell Python explicitly to remove spaces. Um, next, we want to tell Python what lines we want it to look at and print out. So, if line from characters 0 to 8 equals SCF done, right here, that's um, that's the particular parameter that we're looking for. Uh, print that line. So Gaussian uses a method called the self-consistent field method to calculate energies, or at least this particular energy that we're looking for. So that's why we're telling it to find SCF done and extract that data so that we can look at it. Um, so that's why we're telling Gaussian, you're telling Python, if the line starts with SCF done, print that line. So then next we want to move on to a different operation and we want it to print out our vibrational frequencies. Um, so we're going to start the same way. We have to start over and tell it to open that file back up because um, it's because this section of the code is terminated so now it's done and it's awaiting new instructions when it's running down this uh, set of lines here. So it's running down, gets to line 11 here with open, open the file, um, it's a raw string, call it F. Then there's this little line here that I'll explain a bit more in a second that defines the variable sum. So this orange text there is uh, a variable and we define sum as 0, 0.0. Then we're going to go down and say for line in F, strip out the spaces, the tabs, the new lines, and the returns. If the line starts 0 to 11 with frequencies, um, then we want you to take uh, those items, items equals line dot split, so we're going to split this list here, this string, up into separate smaller strings and make a list uh, of items. And then for each individual item in items, uh, we're going to uh, do some more work to them. Um, and so that's items 2 to 5 in this list, and we're going to print all the items which is over here if you've been looking at the right side of the screen um, on our console here, that's all the vibrational frequencies that we're going to print out. Um, so we're telling Python 
um, extract the frequency numbers and print them out um, and this prints the list of strings that are the bidirectional frequencies. Now we want to calculate with these strings so what we have to do is we have to tell Python to make a variable x that is the float of each string item in items by saying x equals float item. Uh, this converts strings of characters to floats which are decimal numbers um, which is necessary for Python to do any sort of math calculation they need to have Python needs to have floats to operate with. Then we want to sum it all up and have Python uh, keep the sum. So if x is greater than 0, because we don't want to use this negative 860 here, we will say sum by addition x. We add them all up. Okay, so now sum is equal to all of these numbers together. So we're going to have Python do some more math. Um, so then we're going to convert sum to our um, SI units. That's our uh, our standard international standard units, or um, whatever the French term is for it, standards de international something. Um, and that sum equals sum times 100, which converts this from per centimeters to per meters. Um, again, because meters are the SI unit. Then we're going to define a series of variables that will be necessary for the calculation. First, we have Planck's constant here. Um, then we have the speed of light. Uh, and we have Avogadro's number. Uh, notice that we're only doing these out to about four or five digits, so we're not doing this um, to the absolute extreme of preciseness. Um, I think Planck's constant itself goes out to about 12 decimal places, so we're not doing that. Um, we're just using a pretty close. So then we need to define what our zero-point energy is going to be. So we define zero-point energy um, as the function. And so ZPE equals 0 0.5 times Planck's constant times the speed of light times the sum times Avogadro's number. And then we wanted to print uh, this little label here saying ZPE equals and then print the value ZPE that's calculated. Uh, note that if we don't put this little ZPE equals in here, uh, we'll just get a number with no context, and whoever looks at that output is going to be kind of confused. So we want to make sure we put that in with this space here so that uh, the spacing is uniform, because uh, those little things are important. Okay, next we want to find out what did Gaussian calculate as the zero-point energy. So again, we start off with um, open the file, strip the lines, find the line we want, in this case, line starting with zero-point V. Slice the number value from that line, change it to a float that we've named value, then print it out with a label. So that's all of this here is just um, open for the line, strip the line. Um, if the line starts with this, grab it, split it, slice it, convert it to a float, print it out with in Gaussian ZPE equals value. Um, now we want to see how close the two are to each other um, for comparison. And uh, this is kind of where we get to see some cool if-then, else-if-then statements um, that I enjoy particularly. So we're going to find our ratio. Ratio equals ZPE, which was our calculated value, divided by value, which was Gaussian. So ZPE ratio equals ZPE divided by value. Uh, if ratio is greater than 0 0.999, and ratio is less than 1.001, print their equal. Else if, that's E-L-I-F, else if ZPE does not equal value, print their not equal. So what's this doing is we are defining a margin of error here. We're telling Python that if we are, uh, if the ratio of our number to Gaussian's number is less than one one thousandth away from unity, that is the ratio equaling one, we are going to consider the two values equal. But if the ratio test fails um, this first parameter, we go to a second parameter, which says that if the numbers are not exactly the same in any way, um, tell us that they are not equal. Uh, the ordering is important on this. Uh, and I explained that more again in that odds and ends video that I mentioned earlier. Um, and making having your if then or your if and else else if statements in the proper order is extremely important. Um, otherwise, your code will just not work at all. 
Um, so now we know that they are equal by the parameters that we've set um, by this printout that's over here on the right again. Um, so now we want to calculate how far off were they. We consider them equal within our margin of error, but what, what was that margin of error? How far off were they? So we're going to define a new variable error, ERR, um, as equaling this equation here, which is your standard equation for calculating percent error, where you have the literature value minus the experimental value divided by the literature value again, uh, times 100 to get a percentage. So then print error equals, and then our error value and a percentage sign at the end. So then we end up with this here, where error is equal to uh, 17 ten thousandths of a percent. So pretty dang close. Um, so now we're going to scroll down on our right side on the console to pretend that we don't have anything run yet and we're going to run this code from start to finish. Um, so to do that on this particular spider with Python 3.7 um, you just hit FN F5 for PCs and then it'll print all this out. So again we look, okay, looking at everything, we run file, we open up our file, um, then we want to print out our SCF done, so okay, here we go. Here's our self-consistent field method energy here, um, our two values. Then we have our list of vibrational frequencies here. Then the sum did not print because we didn't ask it to print the sum, but we did ask it to use a calculation using that sum. And if you wanted to go in with a calculator and do all this by hand um, to verify, you could. It would defeat the purpose of using a Python code, but you know, if you like to double check, you can do that. Um, then we have, you know, the Python calculated ZPE, the Gaussian extracted ZPE. You can tell they're pretty close together. Um, close enough that Python has determined that they are equal. And then our calculated error here. Um, so that's all for now. Uh, you can check out some other videos to get some more detailed rundowns of the specifics. Um, until next time. Happy coding.